Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Welcome, everyone. This is Steve Meisinger, your host of the ISC webinar series. So welcome back. Uh, really pleased to have Randy Frederick today with us. Randy is a director of derivatives at Charles Schwab, and uh, he spends a lot of time um, traveling, teaching various options strategies. He's highly respected, and he's been in the business for a long time, but he really knows options, and he's going to be talking about calendar spread. So I'm really pleased to present Randy Frederick, Director of Derivatives at Charles Schwab. Randy, thanks so much for joining us at the ISC. Thank you so much, Steve. I do appreciate that. It's a pleasure to be with everyone. As Steve's been uh, mentioning here for the last few minutes, we're probably going to we're going to talk about calendar spreads today, and specifically with how to potentially use a calendar spread on one of the ISC FX products. And I, I will endorse the ISC products. I've I've been trading them myself for a couple of years now. I like them a great deal. I'm a big fan of the EUI. I love to trade the dollar versus the euro. I've done that one many many times. Uh, and there are a number of things I like about them. The biggest, not the least of which, I guess, is the the fact that they settle in U.S. dollars and they price in U.S. dollars. I'm an American. I always have been. I buy and sell everything that I buy and sell in dollars. I understand dollars, and it makes sense to me. It's the way my brain works. I like the fact that the ISC products are priced in dollars because that's the way I trade things. There are other products out there that are priced in foreign currencies. I have to, always have to end up doing the math on the paper in order to understand where they're at and where they're moving. But I love the way the ISC products do them in dollars. So I think... Um, Steve has pretty much covered all of the housekeeping stuff, so we'll go ahead and just jump right in here. Uh, as Steve mentioned, my name is Randy Frederick. I am uh, Director of Trading and Derivatives at Charles Schwab. I have been in this uh, business for about 21 years. I've spent the last 16 of those years with Schwab, and I have always been involved in some way uh, with the options part of the business, and the futures business to some degree as well. Uh, and I do travel quite a bit and do a lot of educational events, live events. And lately with, with travel budgets as they are and the economy as it is, everyone's sort of cut back a little bit. So I've been doing a lot of these webinars lately, which is fine. I don't mind them. I prefer a live event whenever I can get in, in front of a group of people and speak to them face-to-face. -face. I always find that a lot more engaging and it's a lot more intimate. But I think given uh, the ability to do these types of events over the Internet, webinars, it's so cheap and simple, and it's a, it's a lot easier for all of you to come together. Uh, these are a great way to, to, to sort of put these things out there. So I'm, I'm happy to be able to do this. And I've had a great relationship with the ISC for, in all honesty, um, really since the ISC was founded. I had um, a relationship with them, which Schwab did, um, in a subsidiary that I worked for for a while called CyberTrader, where we started working with the ISC right around the exact same time they went public, so or they went uh, they actually became an exchange. So it's been a it's been a good, long relationship for a long time. And... Um, and a lot of mutual respect there, to be honest with you. So uh, before I get into it in, in great detail, just need to cover a, a couple of uh, compliance uh, and risk-related issues. I'm going to be talking about some examples in here. Uh, I'm going to be using real symbols. Uh, primarily, I think I'm going to use the Australian dollar and the yen. And then the reason I chose those two was because they were a couple of them that when I built this deck, which was a couple of months ago in January, looked like some that I could get some good examples on. Uh, so I just put those together. It's not that I'm endorsing that we ought to be bullish or bearish on either of those or anything like that. And, in fact, the environment and the, the picture of those those two pairings have changed dramatically in the past two and a half months. But I think they were good examples, and that's why I, why I built the deck around them. Options of any kind have a certain amount of risk involved, and the risks are not necessarily more or less, but just unique to the risks involved in equities trading. If you're interested in learning more about the risks involved in options trading, there's a booklet called characteristics and risks of standardized options. You can get a copy of that book either from the Options Clearing Corporation directly. You can get it from Steve at the ISC. You can get it from me or at Schwab. If you're interested, just let us know. We'll be happy to, to provide that to you. Uh, as I said, the examples are just examples. They're not an endorsement to buy or sell or anything like that. I'm not going to go into great detail about margin. I may mention it a little bit. Uh, mostly I leave margin out because it makes the calculations simpler. It makes the explanations a little bit easier to understand. But most of you understand how margin works. You either spend 
you, all your money or you spend part of your money and you borrow the rest from your broker, it's going to make your costs go up a little bit. you got interest charges, all those sort of things. You're aware of that. I'm also not going to talk about taxes in any um, great detail, probably not at all in this particular session. Uh, you have to be aware of how taxes work on options. It can get kind of complex, so be sure before you do any trading, especially if it's in a tax account, that you um, consult with the tax advisor uh, before you pay taxes or even before you do the trading. Um, so I just those are the things that are going to be left out. But you know, again, they may come up just briefly, but I wanted to mention that to you before I moved on. So the ISC, as uh, Steve was mentioning a few moments ago, but if you've logged in here just lately, you may not have heard him, they have a total of six products that are currency pair related. Uh, there were four initially, and then I think the newer ones that you guys added later were the Swiss franc and the Australian dollar. I think those were the two later ones. Originally, you had the British, the Canadian, the Euro, and the Yen. Those are the four, four originals, and then the two more were la added later. Uh, these, as I said, are, are pairings, and that is they compare how many... They compare the U.S. dollar relative to a foreign currency, and they're all dollar denominated, so it's easier to, to sort of understand how those work. These are the symbols that you can use to get a quote on them. At Schwab, we use the dollar sign designator before any index, so if you're looking to get a quote on this one of these particular indexes on Schwab system, you'd have to type in dollar sign AUX, dollar sign BPX, something like that. That designates to the system that you're looking at an index rather than an ETF or an option or a mutual fund or a bond or whatever else might be out there. So, and all of these are available uh, to trade at Schwab and as they are with most brokers. One of the neat things I think about, about options on foreign currencies is that, oops, Steve, uh, I hope you're hearing me because I'm seeing a message that says someone can't hear me. Hopefully. No, uh, um, you're good. Let me, let me talk right. to Elliot. You're good. Okay. You're good. Great. No problem. So I'll keep going. But one of the things I think is really neat about the creation of these types of products that the ISC has put together is that in the past, if you wanted to trade foreign currencies, you had a couple of choices. One, you could go directly out to the spot currency market, which is an enormous market. In fact, it's one of the biggest markets in any products or anywhere in the world. But the problem is there are a lot of players. There are a lot of small players. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, there are unfortunately a few unscrupulous and not necessarily really transparent players out there in the spot currency market. So it can be a somewhat dangerous game. You know how the how the products are cleared, how they're priced, uh, whether you you pay you know a zero commission and you buy them on a you know on a fixed spread, or whether you see a fully transparent marketplace and you pay a transaction fee. It's very it varies a lot depending upon who you trade with, and in many cases you don't have any idea who the counterparty is, who the clearing is, anything like that. It can be a little bit dangerous. What's nice is that when you create an option based product like the ISC has you have a very standardized product that's fully fungible, that is um, cleared by a reputable clearing agency like the OCC, which clears all the options products that have existed for the last 30 plus years. Uh, those types of risks go away. Uh, the quotes and the marketplace are fully transparent, so you know they're all based on either a market maker quote or even a competing customer out there, which is what you want to see. And you don't have to go out and set up a new account with an FX broker. The other option used to be, and still is, to trade futures on Forex. And there are futures exchanges out there that have futures-based products. But there again, you've got that issue of you have to set up an account with a, with a broker who can do futures. Some brokers do futures, some don't. You, are not, in many cases, have to keep your money separate from your equities and, and options and, and what other, other investments you have. This way, you can trade them right in, your, origin, in your, your standard equities account that you have at whatever broker you trade at, whether that's at Schwab or somewhere else. If you trade options on IBM or options on the QQQQ, you do it exactly the same way. I find it nice because it's just very simple, very easy. I know how the options market works. I can do it right in my existing account. All the money and buying powers are all calculated in the same way as they are with all my other positions. Simplicity is absolutely critical. When you've got the plethora of products that exist out there now um, and all the different types of exchanges, all the different types of, of, um, of assets that you can trade in, simplicity is critical. So these are very nice. And again, details on this tab, as you can see, um, they're exchange listed. They trade in dollars. They're European-style exercise, as are all brand-new indexes that are created, which simply means you can only exercise them at expiration. Uh, and you can trade spreads, which is what we're going to talk about today. Specifically, we're going to talk about calendar spreads. Thank you for listening to our podcast.